am Sue from Sue Pellin Designs, and I wanted to come to you live on Facebook today to talk to you about our next quilt project. Behind me, you're gonna see our last quilt project that we did in 2018, My Magical Garden. I hope you've enjoyed seeing last year's Block of the Month. And um, now we're gonna talk about this year's block of the month. We are collecting red fabrics to be used in the kits that we're going to sell for this project. Now, all of these red fabrics are things that you can buy at your own quilt shop, and you might have a lot of these style in your stash. So I wanna talk about choosing fabrics for your quilt. We're going to do the Belle en Rouge quilt. If you haven't seen the quilt yet, you're gonna see it all over my Facebook page. So I don't have it up here because we're working up in my kitchen today. But I wanted to show you the types of fabrics that we're choosing. So the types of fabrics that we're choosing are generally tone-on-tone -tone red prints. We do have some with more print in them, like this one with a lot of white in the print. This one is going to be used in the basket of flowers. So this is gonna be part of the basket. All the other tone-on-tone -tone prints are gonna be used in the flowers inside that basket. So you can see how this um, fabric with a lot of white in it sets itself aside from the other reds. And that's why we can kind of paint with these fabrics and have the appropriate fabric in the appropriate spot in our quilt so it, it does a job for us. These um, prints with a lot of white in them will become our baskets, where these prints that are just different shades of red are gonna become our flowers and our leaves, etc. Now, when you're choosing reds for this project, you're gonna see that I have a wide variety of reds. And I forget who it was, I think it might've been Mary Ellen Hopkins that told us, all reds play well together. And that's so true. Even though I have reds with all different tones, the tone is kind of the undercast of the, of the color. So we have reds that have a lot of blue undertone in them. If you don't know what I mean by blue undertone, I think you will when we get over to here. So these are very blue here. And then we get into this yellow undertone. So these go more towards the orangey side of red, where these go more to the purple side of red. And so I've chosen reds in every color tone. This one has a lot of pink in it. So we have true reds, we have very bluish reds. We even have some burgundies that go very, very blue. And all of these are useful in our quilt. Most of my patterns though are tone on tone, so they don't have a lot of distinct pattern to, pattern to them. The ones that do are gonna play a very specific job in our quilt. So there is a sheet about how to choose your fabrics, but I wanna to talk today about how to wash your fabrics. Now, because we're doing a red and white quilt, all of these colors are gonna be going up against white in our quilt. And we all know from experience that reds can run. So you see I have a little experiment set up here. And I'm gonna teach you how to test your reds to make sure that they're color fast. And this is not only for reds, this is for any color that you suspect may not be color fast. So I'm heating up some water over on the stove. Let me go get that heated up water. And um, the correct temperature for wash water, um, if you're doing hot water, is 150 degrees. Now, I just ran water out of my tap, which is exactly what my wash water is, and it's really just over 100 degrees. So I heated some up on the stove. I mean, the only reason I did that is because these fabrics are going in my kits. Your hot water might be hotter than my tap water that's going in your washing machine. I don't even know, maybe some washing machines have a heating element in them to bring the water up to 150 degrees. But that is the standard for washing fabrics. So I'm actually going to get this water here at 150 degrees because I wanna make sure that I'm testing these fabrics before you get them in the kit. 
in the worst kind of conditions they could ever see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put about um, a cup of water in each of these cups. And I probably won't have enough water to do all of my samples, so I'm just gonna do a few for you today. So I'm gonna put the hot water in the cups and I'm going to, I already have cold water in the cups that are closest to me. So I'm gonna to continue to do that and fill up all the cups with hot water and I've got cold water. And now I've taken two samples of my fabric. They're about three and a half inches. It doesn't matter how big they are. In a cup of water, if your fabric is gonna bleed, you're gonna see it with a, a piece of fabric about this big. And um, I'm gonna take one and put it in the hot water and I'm gonna take one and put it in the cold water and I'll be poking those down to get them totally submerged. And I'm just gonna go right down the line here. Oh, that's the same fabric. I'm gonna go right down the line and I'm gonna put all my fabrics into these cups and then I'm gonna poke them down with a little skewer or a spoon or something so that we can get them totally submerged in the water. So let's just go right down the line. There should be some skewers in there, Joe. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see if I can find the same. <laughs> We're gonna see if I can find the same colors and put them into the hot water bath as well. So just give me a minute while I poke these down and we're gonna just wait and see what happens with those. Now, when I wash my quilts, I wash them in cold water, but because they're kits, I don't know what you're gonna do with your quilts. So I'm gonna put them under both conditions and we're gonna see what happens. Now, I'll tell ya, I didn't pre-test these, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. I might find that some of these are so bad that I'm not gonna put them in the quilt. So you're watching me get ready for this kit here um, for making the kits, and this is how I'm gonna test your fabric before it goes into that kit so that I know whoever gets the kit is gonna be happy with it. And I know you're not gonna waste time making this beautiful quilt and have it run after you've already made it. So why do we pre-wash? There's a few reasons. The first reason we pre-wash is because we wanna get rid of any shrinkage in the fabric. That's a very important reason. When you're piecing a quilt together, if you have any shrinkage, then your piecing is gonna look sloppy after washing because you might have different levels of shrinkage between different fabrics. So the shrinkage is the most important reason why we wash our fabrics. After that, well, I can't say that's the most important reason, they're equally important. In addition to that, um, we wanna wash our fabrics to make sure that we don't have any running. Now remember, I just put boiling water in there. It's not boiling, but it's 150 degrees. So I wanna be very careful and not poke my fingers in there. And I'm trying to match up these colors as best I can so you can see the difference between the hot water and the cold water. Let's get another hot over here. And let's see if I can match them all up. That's this one. Now, you at home, are you gonna do this? Well, in a way, yes. If you're using fabrics out of your stash, you don't have to be quite so scientific as this. And I'm gonna go into the bathroom in just a minute and show you how I would typically test my fabrics for fastness. So typically, I don't have all these cups. I don't have hot water and cold water. I simply wash my pieces one at a time in the bathroom sink, which is white. And that's going to let me know if I have any bad actors, if I have any problem child, children, in my fabric collection. And I'll take out those ones that don't behave. Excuse me. All right. So now we've got our little three inch piece of fabric in hot water and in cold water. And we're probably gonna wait about 
five or 10 minutes, but I see one that's already given me a little bit of a problem here. Okay, you see the color in the water back there? And that's the worst one, but there's several others that are having a little bit of running. Okay, now I'm gonna just let those sit for a minute. I'm gonna take a look at these water baths and see if we're having an issue with any of our colors. Now, while the fabric is in there, it looks like there's an issue, but when you take the fabric out, it's really just, let's do this. It's really just a reflection of the fabric. It looks almost clear, but when I put the fabric in, it looks like the water is tinged. So don't let that affect your decision. You wanna actually take the fabric out and look at the remaining water in the cup. So this is the one that I thought was gonna be a problem, but you actually have to take the water, excuse me, the fabric out of the water to see if the water is tinged or if it's just reflecting the color. So that one, yes, definitely has a little bit of pink to the water. Just because it has pink to the water doesn't mean it's gonna be a problem. It just means you have to wash it first. So don't assume that this fabric is not gonna go in the kit. I have to do some other tests first, and I have to see what happens in the long run after washing. So Joanne's getting the iron heated up. While she does that, we're going to do another test. Over here, I'm gonna do what we call a crocking test. Now, a crocking test is when you're checking to see if the red fabric, not that it runs or it bleeds, but we're actually checking to see if that red color is going to come off on a white piece of fabric when you rub the fabric. I'm gonna rub it 10 times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I don't see any color. Oh, I do see a little bit of color. It could be lint, and that's exactly what that is. That was just lint on the fabric. Let's see if I can find one that is a problem. Once again, you're learning along with me. I have not done this before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it comes up clean. Now, one that I suspect could be a problem with crocking was that very first color. Now, why do I think that this could be a problem with crocking? This, to me, seems like a pigment printed color. Most of these are dyed colors. They're using dye to make up the color and the dye goes all the way into the fabric and actually reacts with the fabric. I know that most dyes will not have a problem with rubbing fastness or crocking, but this one seems like it could be a pigment print. A pigment is like painting your fabric. It's like painting with acrylic paint. That um, color stays right up on the surface of the fiber. It doesn't soak into the fiber. It doesn't dye the fiber or penetrate and react chemically with the fiber. So because you're just painting it on the surface, it's more likely to rub off of that surface, leaving some white behind. So this is the only one I suspect may have crocking fastness problems, um, but it shouldn't because it's there in the store ready for you to buy. These tests are done at the fabric manufacturers. So if they fail this test, and it is much more technical of a test, I'm just simplifying it. If they fail this test, they should never get onto the, the shop shelves at your quilt store. But sometimes problems happen and sometimes things slip through the cracks. So I'd like to show you how to test for that. Now you'll notice the result of this when you're using your sewing machine. Specifically, if you have a white bed on your sewing machine and you do a lot of sewing with one particular fabric, the fabric color might rub off on the bed of your sewing machine. 
if you've had that experience before, it's because of crocking fastness and it's having an issue with that particular fabric. So let's do it again. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and see if that color rubs off onto the white fabric and we're good to go. There is no crocking issue with that color and that's the only one I really suspected would be a problem. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't count and talk at the same time. So let's just go through these last few pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, is that color or is that just lint? It's actually color. Can you see that? There is some color here left on the white. It's not horrible, but I wouldn't really, um, that it's not the best either. I would really want to wash this fabric and retest. It may be that in the first wash, any color on the surface that's rubbing off is gonna go away. So I would wanna wash this fabric and test it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That one looks good. I'm keeping the test sample with the fabric so that I don't forget which fabric was an issue. Now again, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna use the fabric in the quilt, I just might need to treat it a little differently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I knew this one wasn't going to be an issue, only because um, there's, you can tell there's not a lot of color on the surface. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, crocking fastness is pretty rare to have a failure. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Where I would expect that is not at a quilt shop. I would expect to see crocking fastness at a discount store fabric. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I used to see it when I worked at Cranston, I used to see it a lot with the, the really heavy green prints, particularly like a Christmas um, like a Christmas tree skirt kind of thing where it's a panel and it's all printed. That dark green is very, very heavy. It's only on the surface and that type of color would give us problems from time to time. These reds, I'm not expecting to have a problem. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I did want to share the method of testing for you. That way, if you do have a very heavy or a thick fabric, it feels like you can feel a pigment that's sitting on the surface. It feels stiff. It doesn't feel nice and soft and beautiful. The dyes sink into the fiber, making it feel really soft. The pigments stay right up on top. They're basically glued on and that glue that binds the pigment to the fabric makes it very stiff. So just by feeling these, I know that we don't have a big pigment problem here, so I don't expect these to be an issue. Um, but if you suspect a fabric is going to be pigment printed because it's very, very thick, it's very stiff, um, you might have bought it at a discount store, then you wanna do this test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm, this one surprises me. That's given me a little bit of crocking, but this is also the one that's giving me a little bit of bleeding. And this is a dead giveaway here. My uh, salvage is pink. Did you notice that? If I put the white next to it, can you see that the salvage edge is a little bit pink? That's from just in their processing, I'm not sure my camera's picking it up, but in their processing, they had a bleeding problem too. So it tinged the selvage slightly pink. So I wanna really watch this fabric and see what's gonna happen. I'm not saying that it's going to be a problem in your quilt. There's more things that have to happen. But this fabric is unwashed. And the reason why we're washing our fabric is to get rid of this problem before it goes in your quilt. So it's absolutely imperative to wash these fabrics before they go into your quilt. After washing, 
you could repeat this test and not have any problem at all. And that's the reason for washing your fabrics before you put them into your quilt. So I hope that this proves it to you. I hope I have convinced you to wash your fabrics before putting them into your quilt. Now that we have had these sitting here for, what have we been on, for about 10 minutes? Um, I think it's a good time for us to take them out. And I'm just gonna lay them over the side so we can look inside and see what the wash water is like. And I don't see any problems so far here. And these have been sitting in really, really hot water for quite some time. So if I don't see a problem here, I'm really confident with these fabrics. But if I do see a problem here, I have to take extra care to wash these fabrics before using them. Here's my bad actor here. Here's the one that I'm concerned about. So absolutely, we're gonna wash these fabrics before um, using them in our quilt. Go back to this one here. Do you notice that the hot and the cold are almost identical. There's not a lot of difference between the hot and the cold. So, excuse me, there are two different things going on here. This one is a lot worse in the hot than it is in the cold. Isn't that interesting? So there's two different mechanisms going on here for the color bleeding. Some colors, and it depends on the dye that was used, some colors are only going to bleed in hot water. Other colors are only going to bleed in cold water, and we don't have any of those here. Other colors will bleed no matter what you do with them. Um, so we have to pay particular attention to this fabric here and this fabric here, and make sure that after washing, we don't still have a problem. So let's go to our next test. Our next test is called hot wet press. Hot wet press is trying to force the color um, to bleed out of the fabric when you press it. So I would consider these now after washing. The difference is I haven't put any detergents in these the wash water. When I wash for my quilts, I use a mild detergent. I don't use Tide or Tide with bleach or OxyClean or anything like that, but I'll use a, a mild detergent, um, an average detergent I would use. So I like, I like Arm & Hammer um, detergent when I wash my clothes, and that's what I would use to wash my fabrics because that's the same way I would wash my quilt. So whatever your quilt is going to experience, that's the way you wanna wash it when you're washing your fabrics. So I'm considering all these fabrics now that we're in that hot water, I'm considering them washed, but they're not quite the same as what I would wash them with because I didn't put any detergent in. So just having said that, I'm gonna take each of those wet fabrics and we're gonna go do a test called hot wet press. So we're gonna put each of those squares together with a white square and then I'm going to keep that with my iron and I'm not going to move the iron around I'm just going to heat it with the iron until it's dry that looks pretty good okay I didn't put the iron all over the fabric because if it tends to have a hot wet press issue it will leave the impression of the iron on that white piece of fabric. And this one did not at all. There is no hot wet press issue with this fabric. But I'm gonna keep these two test pieces together. Let's grab another one. I'm gonna do the hot wet press with every single fabric and see if that's a problem. Now as a quilter, why would this be a problem as a quilter? Um, we're not gonna wash our quilt and then iron it dry. But as a quilter, as we're sewing our items together, we might sew a piece of red and white together, and then we might spray it with um, water from our iron and then press it dry. 
that's hot wet press. So if we have a problem or a bad actor in the hot wet press category, then um, we want to know about it before we put that fabric in our quilt. No transfer of color at all with that one. So I'm getting to the ones that had a little issue with bleeding in the wash water. So let's see what they do with hot wet press. Now I'm considering these washed. So hopefully any color, any problem color that was on the surface of the fabric is now in the wash water and it's not gonna come off on my white fabric. But if it does come off on the white fabric, then again, we know we have to treat this fabric with care or not use it. So in order to treat it with care, I'm gonna wash this fabric with detergent in my laundry, in my washing machine. I'm gonna wash it and dry it. And if I have a problem here, I'm gonna repeat this test and see if the washed fabric has the same problem. Look at that, as clean as can be. So now I know that after washing, this fabric isn't a problem anymore. The importance of washing is so obvious when you do these simple tests. So I would do hot wet press with any um, dark color fabric. Any fabric that loses color in the wash water, I'm gonna do this test because this is really the acid test, right? We're not only using hot water like we did here, we're actually boiling that water and pressing it with our iron and that's giving it the harshest conditions possible, perfectly clean, all of my fabrics so far are good, but look which one I've got next. Again, that potential problem fabric, before washing, it seemed like a problem because the wash water. Look at that, beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm not concerned about using this color in my kits as long as I put a instructions in that kit that say, you need to wash your fabrics before you use them. And I do that all the time. Every single fabric I tell people to wash before using. So hot wet press, I'm gonna to continue to do that with all of my fabrics. And then I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna do a test called cold water bleeding. Now you're gonna see residual dye in your uh, water bath here if you have a problem with um, excess dye on the surface of your fabric. When would you see cold water bleeding happen? Say you have a quilt that gets wet in your sewing room, for example, and you don't realize that that fabric got wet. Um, I'm gonna give you a great example. My mom made me a wedding quilt and she had hand appliqued this wedding quilt. It's absolutely beautiful. She hand appliqued this wedding quilt. It's almost like a Baltimore album. And then it was waiting for the next stage to put all the pieces together. And in her sewing room, she had a leaky pipe and it dripped water on the quilt top and she didn't realize it. So that quilt sat wet until she discovered it or until it dried naturally. So one of the fabrics had a cold water bleeding problem. What it means is when your fabric sits wet against a piece of white fabric, it will transfer color. Now, why would you ever have that happen? Well, it can happen by mistake with a leaky pipe or water in your basement or something like that. But it can also happen when you're washing your quilts. Now think of clothing as well. If you have a print that has, say a fuchsia color in it, and you leave that blouse or that quilt in the washing machine overnight. So your wash is finished, but you don't catch it, and you leave your fabric or your quilt or your blouse in the washing machine overnight, that's a perfect example of a cold water bleeding opportunity. So your, your blouse might be folded one piece against the other, the pink part of the print might be rubbing right up against a white part of the print, 
In the morning, you take that blouse out of the washer and the fuchsia color or the red color has now marked off onto the white area. It's stained the white area. That's because of cold water bleeding. Cold water bleeding doesn't happen if you wash the piece, the garment or the quilt, you take it out right away and you dry it right away. Then cold water bleeding doesn't happen. It only happens when you put the, the fabric together with the white and you let it sit until it's basically dry or you let it sit overnight in your washer. So I'm going to let these fabrics sit overnight and in the morning, I'm gonna peel away the, the red and see if the color has transferred due to cold water bleeding. So it's a totally different event that happens with cold water bleeding. It's totally different from the hot wet press. If you suspect you're gonna have a problem with a fabric, you may wanna test both of the, those things. Now I know I'm getting rather technical with you and you might not wanna go through all of these tests every time you're gonna make a quilt, but I'm asking you to join me in making a red and white quilt. I don't wanna be responsible for a bad acting fabric getting in your kits. So I wanted to show you the process that I will go through on all of those kit fabrics. I will do every one of these tests and make sure that the fabric that's in your kit is the best fabric that we can give you. But I'm also encouraging my students to work from their stash. And so I want you to also understand what you can run into with a red and white quilt, the problems you can run into, and how you're gonna avoid those problems from the very beginning. Now this project is excessive. We're using 20 red prints or red and white prints. So it's really imperative that you do some type of testing. So I'm gonna do one more thing with you. Instead of being very scientific, kind of like we were here, I'm gonna show you a practical way to test this. We're gonna take our fabrics, either our half yards or our fat quarters, whatever fabric we're using, and we are gonna to go to our sink in the bathroom and we're going to wash these fabrics in the sink and see if we have any bleeding problems. Then we're gonna to go to our washing machine and I have two of each of these fabrics. So one way to do this is in the sink with your eyes on the fabric. Another way to do it is to put everything in your washing machine with a shout color catcher. These shout color catchers will catch any of this dye, all that red dye that's now in the cup, it's gonna end up in the color catcher. And if your color catcher comes out dark red from your wash, then you know that you might have a bad acting fabric and you have to find the culprit and get rid of it. Now I hope you're all ready washing your fabrics before you make your quilts. Now I didn't tell you the third reason why we're gonna wash our fabrics before making our quilts. The third reason is you've got finish on your fabric and that finish is water soluble. So this finish is gonna wash off anyway. So let's get rid of it before we start making our quilt and that way it won't interfere with our Misty Fuse. Now, when you're using Misty Fuse or any other fusible, the fusible sticks to fibers, cotton fibers. It does not stick to chemicals. And if it does stick to chemicals and then you wash your quilt, that bond might wash away as well. So I like to wash my fabrics to get rid of the chemicals on the surface of the fabric. And that way I know that my bonding is gonna be the best possible bond. So I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna rinse it out in the sink. And you can see it's left a little bit of red behind. So I just make note of that. Hopefully that's all the red that's gonna come out. So I didn't feel like that was a big issue. I'm gonna do this again with the next fabric and I'm looking in the sink at the end to see how much color has been washed away from the fabric. Now, once again, you're gonna take the fabric out before you make that judgment. 
because right now that fabric is reflecting in the bowl and it looks pink in the water, but once you take the fabric out, there's very, very little pink there. Now, I don't want you to overreact to this issue. If it's very little pink, I just go ahead and do the next one. But let's, for the sake of being scientific here, let's let the water out and try again. Um, just because you see a little bit of pink in the water, it doesn't mean it's gonna ruin your quilt. So I just want you to be aware that if you find one that is bad, we want to look at it after washing. And again, see if it continues to be bad. So if I have a really bad one, that's when I'm gonna do the hot wet press, I'm gonna do the cold water bleed test, and I'm also gonna do the crocking test to see what the real issue is. My hands are freezing here. I'm gonna use a little bit warmer water. So after I've gone through this process, and I've looked to see if I suspect any of these are gonna be an issue, then I'm gonna take all of these wet fabrics, throw them in my washing machine with a color catcher, and wash them the right way with detergent. After I wash them with detergent, I do not suspect I'll have any further issues. But if your color catcher comes out bright red, then you're gonna find the problem child. I know from this test where the problem child is. So I'm gonna isolate it, I'm gonna grab it, take it away, and after washing, I'm gonna do those other tests. So only after it fails one or more of those tests, then I would take it out of the quilt or take it out of your kit. So I want you to know that I'm going through all of this work because I want to give you the best kit possible. And I want you to know how you can do this with your own fabrics so that you're gonna end up happy with your finished quilt. So I think that's enough washing. I've got dishpan hands already. I am gonna continue this process. I'm gonna go through all my colors and um, I'm gonna make sure that all of this work is done for you so when you buy the kit, you can buy it with confidence. I think that is it and I'm gonna ask if there are any questions, Joanne. Did anybody post questions on Facebook while we were talking? They did not. Okay, good. good. I'd like to say hello to Laura. Hi, Laura. And Patricia Minnick. Oh, hi, Pat. How are you? She says great info. Good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now, you can see that I come from a very technical background. I worked as a color chemist in the lab um, in a print factory where we made cotton fabrics for quilters. So this does get a little technical because that's my background. You don't have to be quite so technical with your testing, but I just want you to know the steps involved so that if you are the type of person that wants to be cautious and, and really wants to make sure that you're not wasting your time making this beautiful quilt without testing, you know how to do it yourself now, okay? All right. I'm going to finish up here and I want to thank you for joining us. I'm going to get back to sewing this beautiful quilt because I want you to see the finished quilt so that you can sign up for Belle en Rouge. It's on my website now. You can get these videos, all of my printed instructions, and you can make the beautiful quilt with us. I forgot to mention, I'm doing red and white. You can make this in any color you want. One person said she was gonna do black and white. Well, I'm really curious to see how that's gonna look. I'm gonna make this quilt with a blue background and all beige leaves and flowers. And I think that's gonna be beautiful as well. So watch for us, um, join our Facebook group. It's called Quilt Along with Sue Pelland. So if you join that group, you're gonna see the progress of this quilt and still the My Magical Garden quilt from all of our quilters last year. I hope you'll join us. Thank you.